Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to configure user-based tunneling with downloadable user roles. We are also going to show you how to install the certificate in ClearPass and the switch to enable downloadable user roles. To start off, we first need to configure certificates in ClearPass to use downloadable user roles. So in ClearPass, we'll go to Administration, Server Certificate. We'll change the server to HTTPS. Then we're going to create a certificate signing request. And he, once this window, the wizard pops open with a window, we'll add in our organization, organizational unit, location, state, country. We'll need to give it a private key password and verify it. We'll click Submit, and that'll generate the signing request. So we'll also download the signing request and private key files. And then we're going to copy and paste what's in the window. It's important to note here before we move over to Windows that it all, every ClearPass instance should have a trusted public certificate installed on it. You can read more about that in the ClearPass user documentation on arubanetworks.com. Uh, in this case, if you have, what I want to show you is if you have a Windows server and a certificate in story, authority installed on that, we can sign the certificate with that. So that's what we're going to go through in this next step. Before we move on from this page, we need to copy the certificate signing request here because we're going to be entering that in in another place. So moving on, we'll then go to our Windows server and open up a web browser. And then we're going to navigate to localhost front slash cert serve, C-E-R-T-S-R-V. Once we get there to the page, we're going to click on request a certificate and then advanced certificate request and then submit a certificate using a PC, PKCS. We're going to copy and paste the signing request and then we're going to select a web server for the certificate template and then click next, submit, and then we'll click yes. We're going to download certificate chain. We're going to make sure it's base64 encoded and then download certificate chain and then open the file that it downloads. Then we'll see the two certificates, the root cert and the server cert that we created here as we expand the files. And we're going to export both these files. So first we're going to export the server cert using the export wizard. Go to base64 encoded. And click next on that. Then we'll put it in the location. Uh, I think I'm calling it server cert for this. And submit and it'll export. And click next. Finish. And it'll export successfully. Then we'll do the same for the root certificate. Click on uh, base64. Save it as a file name for call it root cert. export. It'll finish successfully. So now we need to copy the root certificate into the trustless on ClearPass as well as onto the uh, switch itself. So we're going to copy the files here or make sure we know where the files are at. I'm RDPing so I'm going to copy the files over into my VM that I have ClearPass running on. Copy both those files over here. Looks like I've done it before, so I'm going to replace them. So now that I have the files copy, I make sure my TFTP server, server is pointing to the directory, so I can copy the root cert onto the switch. So now from ClearPass, we can uh, import the server cert. Well, first we need to add it to the trust list. So we go to the trust list, we go to add. And then we uh, point to the location of the root certificate file. And we can add that into the trust list. Then we go back to ser server certificates. And then we import server certificate, make sure we're on HTTPS. We uh, choose the server cert file that we created earlier. And then we uh, use the private key file that we originally created from ClearPass. Should be in the de default downloads by uh, default. And then we'll add in the uh, key that we created earlier. And then we'll import it. So once it says we exp imported successfully, 
make sure the root certificate matches up. We got to log back into uh, ClearPass after we do this. And then we, once we log back into ClearPass, we can check the trust list for our certificate. We look through the list and we can match it up to the root certificate values. We'll check the service certificate and the HTTPS, make sure the dates are correct, and then make sure the root certificate's correct. And then we can go to the switch and copy the root certificate over. We gotta check the time first though. That's an important step. Make sure your time matches on your switch and your clear pass. So we can see what uh, certificate trusted anchor profiles are installed. So it looks like we have something on here already and show crypto PKI TA dash profile. So we can clean that out using crypto PKI zero rise. And then that wipes out all certificates. And then we create a new profile using crypto PKI TA profile. We'll call this PUTN dash demo. And then we'll copy using TFTP TA certificate, uh, the profile that we just created and then the IP address of our TFTP server. Make sure the location is correct to where the root certificate's installed. And then we'll copy that over to our switch. We'll make sure we have the correct file name at the end there, that it matches what's in our TFTP server. Using this, we can copy the name directly from the TFTP server. So the transfer is successful. We can verify that using the show crypto PKI TA profile command. And we can verify that the certificate installed correctly. So after we get the certificate installed, the next step is that we need to create a uh, identity account for ClearPass. So this we use the Radius server CPPM identity uh, we're going to call the user uh, demo test. So basically this will be a read-only administrator that we create in ClearPass. So here we'll give it the username and the key, save it to the switch, then we'll go into ClearPass to admin users, add the user, and create the ID that we just created on the switch. I want to make sure it's case sensitive and we have the correct password verified and then we add that user as a make sure it's a read-only administrator so then once we're done creating the administrator we can go back into the switch and bounce the port so here we're going to disable and re-enable the port and look at the uh, access and we see that the user role is downloaded we can see under user role that with an asterisk if it has an asterisk in front of it it means that it it's a downloaded user role we can use show user role downloaded to see the name and list of them. We can do detailed to see uh, any detailed information within it. So as we did with user-based tunneling and local user roles, we can do the show tunneled node users command and still see all the same pertinent information from the CLI. Now we're going to discuss a new feature that was released with 16.05, with the 16.05 version of Aruba OS switch. This adds an enhancement to dynamic segmentation or per user tunnel node where the secondary role no longer has to be manually defined on a controller but now can be downloaded from ClearPass. So to start off let's go into our ClearPass configuration here. Log in and then we will go to our profiles. Actually I'm going to create a new profile here. So we're going to change it, select Aruba, the Aruba Downloadable Role Enforcement Template. And then we'll give it a name, name it a Controller Role. And we're going to select the product as a Mobility Controller. We'll go to Next. Uh, we'll give it a Test ACL here. Just permit any, save the rule. We'll uh, select it. Oops. Okay. 
I'm going to select the ACL type session and the name. We'll add it to the list. Uh, we're not going to worry about VLAN since that's going to be assigned at the switch. So we're basically we're just going to pass the test ACL here and then we're going to save that. So now we have a controller role. So then we're going to go to our downloadable user profile here. And one thing that's different, if we go here to the attributes and we see here, when we configure a downloadable role, we'll have this HPE-CPPM-role. So now if we try to edit here, we would use to use, in the tunneled node server redirect command, it would have a secondary role. And that secondary role is the role that exists on the mobility controller. So now we can just name this VSA and what it's going to do is tell the switch to look for this new attribute that we introduced with uh, this enhancement. Now in order to use this, we need ClearPass 6.7 or later and AOS 8.3 on the controller or later. So here, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to select the one I just created and save that. And we can save that profile. So now we're ready to download that to the controller. And if we go and log into our controller, we need to make sure our controller is set up to download user roles from ClearPass. So if, we can, if we're just using the default profile here, we need to select download role from CPPM and ensure that's checked. And when we go and create our radius servers, so here I have one named CPPM. So when we create our radius server here, if we scroll down to the bottom, we need to enter our CPPM credentials. So this is the read-only administrator account that we created for our switch user role, as we can see in the uh, downloadable user role video. So we need to make sure we have the appropriate credentials in the radius server that the controller can talk to the radius server. So then when we go to the switch, if we go to our switch, we can bounce the port, disable and re-enable the port that we're on. This will start the tunneling again. And we can verify. We can verify that the client came up. And so now we see in the user role we see that the user role has been downloaded. So now if we go to show tunneled node users all, we can see that the secondary role has been downloaded as well. And if we go to our controller, we do show rights, download, downloaded user roles, we can see we have the one that I just downloaded which is, whoops, you can see the one I just downloaded, which is 3010. You can see here, control role 3010-1. 30, we go to the switch, see 3010-1, 30, so that matches with that. So now, instead of having to configure this controller role and all the policy involved in it on each and every controller, you know, if we have multiple clusters in our campus, now we can just configure it all in ClearPass and it's centralized so we can dynamically assign these roles whenever users come online. We could still use either way. We can do it manually or we can do it dynamically downloading the user role. It depends on the customer, it depends on the environment and uh, the preference for that. With that being said, I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, please post on the campus switching and routing page on Airheads, the Airheads community at community.arubanetworks.com, and we will definitely answer any questions that you have. Thank you.